we've been covering this case, the sorority sisters who complained about a man posing as a woman coming into their sorority. Artemis Langford is the name that he goes by now. It's a long story, Nelly. I don't use the pronouns of choice any longer. I did a whole post on it. But um, he, Artemis, was a man, I mean, like two seconds ago. Uh, I'll give the audience a flavor for what Artemis looked like during the midst of the pandemic. Wasn't flirting, as far as we know, with transitioning at all, was appearing on campus as a man. Here he was. Communicating with friends, uh, putting that, you know, social network that you have uh, from in-person to an online format uh, would be extraordinarily beneficial. And I wish that I had developed that better, but living in a new environment, uh, it was really difficult. Well, that is one of the newest members of Kappa Kappa Gamma at the University of Wyoming, because he then declared that he was a woman and went into the sorority house under pressure from the national chapter. They admitted him um, by a vote that was secret in which the girls were not allowed to see who was you know, voting. But they were told, unless you have a reason other than him being biologically male, you may not vote against him. Uh, so he gets in. And then the sisters, many of them complained about inappropriate conduct while in the sorority house. Frankly, not, it's not even relevant to me. Like, I mean, it's disgusting what they alleged he did. But it's not even relevant to me. Men don't belong in women's spaces and sororities, are, by definition, are one of them. The, the sorority was on his side. Um, the sisters sued because they thought the definition of female, they required a female uh, membership in the charter should control and they lost. And now the guy who was alleged to have been getting off while watching the girls do their yoga change into their nighttime clothing, kept asking them about their breasts and their vaginas. Cause you know, that's normal girl talk. Nelly, how's your vagina? How's it? Hey, welcome to the Megan Kelly show. How's your vag doing? That doesn't happen. Not a thing. Okay. So, all right, Sam, I'm setting it up. <laughs> She's laughing. That, that's the set of, uh, I think in these <laughs> conversations, it is important to remember that there's a real person here and this person is often suffering and it is, you know, there's a, I feel really sorry for this person, right? At the same well, time. I was, I was, I could have gotten behind that before we got to the, you know, touching himself and erection under the pillow while he's watching the girls in the sorority. That I, my empathy is only with the girls. Uh, uh, it really well, is. I get it. I mean, at this point though, the American left is really out of step with, basically broader liberalism. Um, the the American left stance is that anyone can declare themselves any gender they want and ought to have um, access to any space they want, a uh, women's prison, a uh, sorority, sports teams, obviously, anything. That's really out of step with, again, broader liberalism, with what's happening in Europe, um, where you see a, a real walking back of that. And the British Labour Party just actually um, put out maybe a week or two ago, a couple weeks ago, um, a statement saying self-ID, this idea that you can just announce that you're a certain gender and that then you have access to those spaces. It, it's not what we support anymore. And in fact, women's only spaces make sense and are really important and we stand by that. And so I don't know if I find myself agreeing with the British Labour Party and feeling like my politics align pretty well with that, then I know I'm not too right wing on an issue. Um, yeah, I, I the American left on this is is in a bizarre tangle and I cannot figure out why. Yeah. Like, and and the exactly. story. Now that he's won his lawsuit, or, sorry, the sisters have lost their lawsuit against Kappa Kappa Gamma. Um, he's out there claiming that he was the victim here. And the, the press is going along. Look at this absurd clip from MSNBC in which this anchor, who I've literally never heard of before, gives not even a word to the discomfort of the women who were in the sorority house, uh, allegedly being stared at and so on. But even if, even if he didn't do that, the, they, they shouldn't have to share their sorority house with a man. Uh, but listen to how the press addresses this story that I just outlined for you. Artemis Langford, the very brave woman at the center of it all, is joining me now. It's got to be hard, Artemis, to start off your junior year. You know, you should be thinking about what classes you're taking. Um, 
which friends you're going to be hanging with. Instead, you're thinking about this lawsuit. Do you have support from other women in the House? It takes a very brave and unique person to do this, to be a first in a situation like this. And then to continue on, um, what makes you want to stay with everything that you've been through? I'm certainly not the first trans person to ever be attacked by elements in the media to be used. And unfortunately, I, I don't think I'll be the last, but I want people to know that it's never okay for that kind of scrutiny on a person just because of their identity, just because I'm trans. It's okay to be exactly who you are. The scrutiny is not because Artemis is who he is. It's because he joined a woman's only group. Sure response is to call him a very brave woman. There's not even a trans on it. He's a woman now. Okay, it takes a brave and unique person to be first. Not a nod to the discomfort of the women. And you've got to give her a cherry on top of it for it's got to be hard. It was hard. And if you had done your homework about this case, you would know that that was part of the problem. Unknown anchor who I've never seen before. <laughs> your thoughts on it? Odd that this movement that was all about believe women is now so skeptical of women saying they're uncomfortable with something. It seems really odd to me. Um, and, and that the empathy is like we talked about at the start, that the empathy is only with this individual and not at all with any of the other people who are being impacted by having a biological male in a women's house. Um, I, again, I don't understand why the American left has taken this stance and has become so obsessed with this hard line. It seems irrational and- um, But this is definitely the hill they wanna die on. I'll tell you who the unsung heroes of COVID are, of course, the frontline workers. But what about those business owners who hung in there and paid their employees during the pandemic? If you stayed open and paid your people, you could be eligible for up to 26,000 bucks per employee at covidtaxrelief.org. $26,000 per employee. This is not a loan. These are government funds that you don't have to pay back. All types of businesses, including nonprofits and churches, can be eligible. But you need to apply now because Congress may pull the funds. COVIDtaxrelief.org has helped tens of thousands of businesses just like yours and secured over $500 million. And unlike others, they charge nothing, absolutely nothing, up front. They do all the work, then share a percentage of the cash they get for you. You did the tough thing for your employees during covid now let covidtaxrelief.org help you get up to 26,000 bucks per employee. Visit covidtaxrelief.org, covidtaxrelief.org, covidtaxrelief.org. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.